What's your stance? What's my stance on 9-11? Oh, um, anti. It was a tragedy. I mean, we lost 19 of our best guys. Huh? to get you a new hat. This is no. This has gotten so scraggy. Scraggalicious. Character. Super it's scraggy. Been some things. <laughs> what? Is that what you'd say about people? Just because they've been through things, you have to discard them. I treat my hats like I treat people. Oh yeah. With reverence. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be making sense of life through the big sick. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It follows Camille as he pursues his dream of being a stand-up comedian. One day, he meets a college student, Emily. They start a relationship, unbeknownst to Camille's family. Eventually, it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Emily yes. is not of Pakistani no, heritage. No. She is... Of unknown origin. Unknown origin, but she looks like she's of European uh, descent, yes, aka yes. white. Yes. Emily especially shows a reluctance. She doesn't want to date. She says mm -hmm. she's busy with school. But Kumail, he actually seems like he wants a relationship, mm -hmm. which is interesting because he's Pakistani. And in the family that he comes from, arranged okay. marriage is the expectation, yes. right? Yes. Your parents broker yes. a, a marriage for you, yes. basically. There's no dating. Then ultimately, Kumail gets the relationship to happen. Yeah. They start dating seriously. One day she finds out that he has all these pictures of women in his cigar box. The various women that yeah. his mother has presented yeah. him with. Are you judging Pakistan's next top model or something? <laughs> Seriously, no. who are these women? Okay, um, you know how we have arranged marriage in my culture? These are those women. They get into a fight, they break up because then she feels he's been lying to her. The fact that he's been getting set up with all these women. Shortly after, Mill finds out that Emily has to go into the hospital. They put her into an induced coma so that they can figure out what's wrong. A friend of Emily calls Camille asking if he can look after her because no one else can. He does. Eventually, Emily's parents show up. It's awkward at first, but they actually start to get to know each other. They form a bond. He comes to terms with the reality of how he feels yeah. and how, you know what, I actually want to fight for this yeah. relationship. But all of this is all one side. It's not happening with Emily because Emily is in a coma. So when she wakes up, they're still broken up and things are still as they were. He tries to win her back when she gets out of the coma. She still isn't into it. But when he takes a chance to move to New York with friends to pursue stand-up, she sees the stand-up routine that he did right after she came back from the coma. And he told the whole story, basically. And he gets very emotional and explains how much he cares and loves for her. So she gets to understand how he feels towards her. At the end, she... Uh, Gives him another shot. Characters. Char characters. <laughs> yeah, Camille, based on Camille. Nanjani. Nanjani, based on his life. And then Emily. We have Emily. And then Camille's, Camille's family, his brother, his sister in law, and his parents. And then Emily's, uh, parents. Emily's parents. Yeah, Camille is a aspiring stand-up comic. He comes from one of those split culture situations, which I think inspires a lot of people to pursue things like comedy because a lot of times that's the way you survive growing up because you're just different from the get-go from a lot of people around you and comedy is a good coping mechanism, a good way of surviving. People will like you more maybe if you can make them laugh that they, they won't, you know, be as hard on you or bully you as much. He's a very likable guy, mm -hmm. very funny mm -hmm. and smart, nice. He's kind. But despite the fact that he's all these nice things, I think he still messes up though. Yes. I think it's so dodgy. Yes. He knew going into the relationship that he pursued mm -hmm. because Emily said that, you yep. know, I'm not interested. Yep. He could have said, okay, you know what? It's probably a good thing too, mm -hmm. because I'm not going to get this girl into a relationship knowing full well that my parents would not ever mm -hmm. accept her or this relationship. Yeah. But he pursues it. And I think that was so unfair. It's fair that sometimes, you know, you can have casual relationships, yeah. but that relationship was certainly not casual. Got to a point where Emily is wanting him to meet his yeah, family. And he's dodging. And he's dodging. Yeah. And you can see as she also talks about, you know, I was divorced. I was pretty unhappy in my first marriage and I drank a lot and uh, one way to cover drinking a lot is to just like know a lot about wine. Wait, I'm sorry, what did you just say? That knowing a lot about wine sort of covers for drinking a lot. <laughs> no, I mean the huge piece of information that you're trying to just blow right past. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was married. You um, were married? I was. I was married. Do you want to talk about something else or? At this point, I've told. That's true. She's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, at this point, this is no longer just a casual relationship. You guys are yeah. thick in the relationship. If you are going to get into a serious relationship with someone, tell them the background. Tell yeah. them the mess that you're going to get them into because yeah. that is. But you know, so that's my gripe. Yeah, that it's, a fair, it's a fair grade. Right. That's a qualm. That's a qualm and a half, mm -hmm. for sure. It's a tricky thing. I think probably a lot of people run into that where they know so many people from the beginning will be like, well, wait, whoa, wait, like now your family has to completely accept me. You know, they're going to be different than why are we even starting to date? They want to be able to try and date and maybe hope that once it it's really working, then I, I don't know. But, but that's still dishonest. I don't dishonest, like that. Though. I, I, it's I a get tricky, what you're saying. It's a tricky spot. It's tricky for him. It's a tricky spot for him. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. it's still not right. It's not fair to say, well, I don't want to tell you because if I tell you, you might end this relationship. Right. Yeah. If I want to end the relationship based on what you tell me, yeah. let me end it. He's lying. He's yeah. being dishonest the whole time. And it doesn't make him a bad person. I totally yeah. also sympathize with the fact of he was scared yeah. of losing this woman yeah. that he yeah. loves and I think he didn't want to tell her because as it turns out yeah. Emily's like well I don't want to be in a relationship mm -hmm. with you if your family won't accept yeah. the relationship yeah. so that's also something like, that he's like I don't want to lose this thing that I love and I want to enjoy it I get that it's, too well, it's tough because I think where he's split is that he is very close to this family but culturally it definitely seems like he's very American he's into all these obscure movies horror movies and he, and he, he just all his references points are very American comedy and film and music and all this stuff. Yeah. So him and Emily click. They have the same cultural experiences. And that's the challenge of being an immigrant, isn't it? Pakistan is inside the house. Mm -hmm. Very finite area. But America is huge. You go out there, you go to school, you meet friends, you go to work. Yeah. It's not Pakistan whatsoever. Yeah. And so that means well, like, you're getting socialized more in a Western way yeah. than in a, in a Pakistani kind of way. It was not the right thing to do, but... But I get I, where he was coming from at the same really time. That's a really tough tough thing. Yeah, it really he just is. just couldn't relate to any of the people he was getting set up with. Mm -hmm. And so he's feeling lonely or desperate or you want to date someone. Or and you he wanna, fell in you know, love and he didn't want up. it to end. Yeah. So he, yeah, he got he, scared and, you, yeah. and then you get dishonest to keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. You're ducking my parents. Oh my God. The two day rule. Seriously. Oh, red it. flag yes. after red flag. They're such a liar. You lied to me. You lied to your parents. And those are just the people you like. Is there someone that you're not lying to you? I'd love to meet them because then I could tell them what a fucking liar you are! Emily, I really understand her devastation. I think that she was definitely treated unfairly, mm -hmm. but Emily has freedoms that Camille doesn't have. I don't know if it's fair to say I would have liked for her to have maybe like an extra scene mm -hmm. <laughs> where they talk things out and she says, you know what? I understand why you kept things from me. Like, this is where I come from. My parents are super accepting. They don't care who I date. Yeah. But these pictures that you have really are reflective of the fact that you totally live a different yeah. life and you can't even imagine the kind of expectations that you have over you. And I think that's something when you're in an interracial relationship, those are things that I think you need to accommodate, those kinds of like understanding of each other, which I don't necessarily think I saw, but I understand why, because she was really hard broken yeah she asks him do you see a future at all where we end up together yeah. and he says no devastating can you imagine a world in, in which we end up together i don't know So I, I totally get where she's coming from. Yeah. But in general, I think like she's just a sweet person. Yeah. You know, she's funny. She's still hopeful outside of having had a yeah. divorce. That's probably why she didn't want to date, but at the same time, still Gave a hopeful a person chance. and yeah optimistic and willing to try stuff so you know i'm sure that she does become a more understanding person later on but at first if she doesn't really have yeah context. that experience and context about really like not at all no chance that is kind of a hard thing to understand if you don't really come from a family where it's like yeah you are only marrying a certain type of person that's it that's fair yeah but uh she acted the way she did i think i was so worried we saw on the news that a train derailed and we thought that you were on the train and you had died Nobody died on that train, ma. But did they look under the train? Camille's mother? Camille's mother. Yes. I think, especially in, in the end of the movie, they show that she is a, a loving, good person. And in her way, I think she's trying to do the best she knows how to for her kids. That's how it's been done, and that's just the way she knows how to help her sons, which is like, life is going to be easier if you have a wife, so I'm going to be hustling out here, getting people to come over, and let's make something happen. Outside of having a wife, having yeah. a wife within our culture, you know, it's a collectivist culture that they're coming from. They talk about this guy, their cousin. Your cousin is staying with that white woman. No one is going to visit that baby, and that baby 
be mark my words will grow up without a family it's like he's dead or worse it's very sad mm. when you hear that you understand that it's not just no one talks me. to him again it's not just yeah no one yeah. talks to him it's not just me camille it's yeah. not me your mother yeah. who's going to be upset if you don't end up with yeah. you're literally going to be ostracized yeah. from our community yeah. and i don't want that from you yeah. i think a lot of the times when you're looking at these kinds of situations when parents are trying to broker an yeah. arranged marriage you're but, thinking why are they forcing yeah. this on this poor kid but it's like, like are these parents just heartless like yeah. no think about the greater context of yes it'll affect them negatively and you can see that as selfish but they also know that their kid will be ostracized and that means that their kid's gonna struggle a lot more too. Yeah. It's just gonna be harder for everyone. Even people even that kid, that fact. don't that don't get wrapped up in the caring about, oh my reputation, or what will people think? Even people that don't care about that still know it's gonna be harder for the kid. Sometimes they'll encourage the kids not to go outside the culture just for the ramifications of you're gonna lose your community. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing. I think that's where Camille's mom is coming from. Mm -hmm. And she's just scared for her kid. I've decided I won't let you kick me out of the family. Since I'm a member of the family, it would stand to reason that I would get a vote in whether or not I get kicked out, and that vote would have to be unanimous, standard parliamentary procedure. So, all those in favor of not kicking Kumail out of the family, raise your hand. Great, motion to kick Kumail out of the family, denied. So you guys can just talk to me. Camille was really great about how I'm not gonna lose my yeah, family. It, yeah, yeah, I'm it, still gonna fight for you guys. And then in their way, they show, okay. Let's yeah. fight for you too. Yeah, yeah. she's still not talking to him, <laughs> yeah. but when he's moving to New York, he- Makes him his favorite dish. Yeah. You're still kicked out of the family, but because we did not get a proper chance to say bye to you, so your mother is so angry with you. She's not going to get out of the car. She's not going to even look at you. I don't believe that you kept so much of secret from me, your father. Sorry. Yeah. She asked me to give this to you. Mutton biryani for your trip. Your favorite. So you can tell that, you know what? This woman loves her kid. Yeah. Kumi, you're being selfish. You're not thinking about us. You're not thinking about Khadija. In fact, you're not even thinking about that girl you are in love with. You think American dream is doing just about whatever you want? and not thinking about other people, you're wrong. The dad has a, a similar outlook to the mother, just maybe less aggressive about it. He's and definitely the peacemaker. He's the peacemaker, yeah. 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 yeah, he's a funny guy, I like him. He's yeah. a really goofy dad. He puts out a lot of fires. They're calling him at one point because yeah. there's another oh, woman yeah. that the mother the mother has arranged to yeah. visit and they can't get in touch with him. And he's just like, oh, let's sing. I think I should make something clear. Um, मुझे उर्दू जानती हूँ मैं आप सबको समझ रही हूँ भाई मानना पड़ेगा पाकिस्तान कभी नहीं गई लेकिन उर्दू बहुत साफ है तुम्हारी शुक्रिया तो कुल जाना सुना बेटा अब तुम नहीं चढ़े रह सकते पीठ पे हमारी अब तुम नहीं चढ़े रह सकते पीठ पे हमारी भोज तुम्हारा लेकर मन में आग लगती I think he's just a gentle soul. Yeah, I think the whole family is. His brother yeah. too. They have a, like a, a brotherly kind of relationship where they'll tease each other and make fun and stuff, but he also cares about them. You have to marry a Pakistani girl. Like, like I hung out with other girls. But then I married Fatima and we hardly spoke two words to each other in the first few months. But now, Kumi, she's like my best friend. I know. You have to break up with her immediately. If I find someone who's as good for me as Fatima is for you, mom would understand, right? I mean, she, she wouldn't love me less. No, she'd definitely love you less. I know that you're different, but look at me. Yeah, I got set up, but now we're like best friends. It could work, you know? Well, why do you have to go against all these things that we've been doing for so long? Which is also really interesting, I think, with Naveed. It just really shows you how you can be raised by the same parents and come out yeah. different. He's very much more of a traditionalist, and he did get someone that he actually ends up enjoying, but it's not always gonna happen for people, and it just doesn't ever work out for Camille. What's the whole thing with Muslims growing beards anyway? It's such an arbitrary thing, right? Like, oh. Decided that oh, much. Yeah. we so have to have beards. So there's a billion of us, and you're the only one with the truth. Is that right? So the sun is just shining down on you right now. It's just a party. Uh. He is very frustrated with Camille for not being a normal, yeah. normal yeah. Pakistani guy. Yeah. But I don't think it's coming from a selfish place. It's more coming out of fear, just like with the mother. Yeah. These cookies are really good. The biscuits. Listen to yourself. You hardly sound Pakistani. Okay. Sound like Julie Louis Dreyfus. 
such a burger. He calls him a burger. Yeah. I'm not really sure what that means, yeah. but I'm assuming it's a derogatory term. Yeah. For like me, for when you're not you're like acting too white or yeah, something, something yeah. like that. The family, I think, are good to each other generally and try to be supportive, but I think there is still that closed-mindedness and that frustration that people have when it's like why do you always have to be different you're so special that you think like you figured it out and everyone yeah. else is wrong i think that can be frustrating when you're overly invested in how someone else is living yeah okay you want your brother to be okay but he'll do things differently maybe he'll figure it out i think sometimes people push you into certain things because it's uncomfortable to have that proximity with someone who's living life differently yeah and in this situation it's uncomfortable for the fact of you're affecting the family dynamic yeah emily's parents is this seat? Okay. I like that. She's so feisty. Yes. <laughs> and she's just... Yes. Very yeah. straight shooting, honest, <laughs> doesn't care about if you know she doesn't like you or not. She'll yeah. show it. <laughs> yeah. You know where you stand with her. Yeah, come on. There's no reason uh, you should eat there by yourself, right, hon? It's a free country. Terry is also the peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a little kind of confused and maybe off put by uh, Camille being there because he also knows what happened. But also sees like, okay, he wants to be around. We can let him sit with us at least and eat. Yeah, but they were definitely irritated with him yeah. with it yeah. at first. They yes. just wanted him gone. But I think they definitely come around realizing that, wow, okay, we're clearly averse to him being here. We're not yeah. welcoming at all. Yeah. And yet he's coming and doing the hard thing anyway. Yeah. Through circumstances, they have to spend more time together. They end up going to his comedy show where things get heated between an audience member, which kind of bonds them further. I think it helps Beth and Terry to really come to sympathizing with Camille for why he would have ended things with Emily or why he right. wasn't able to further the relationship. Right, right. I think it was just that understanding that, wait a minute, you don't come from the same background. Mm. You live differently. Yeah. I think that experience definitely changed things a little yeah. bit. There was a closeness afterwards. There was one point where Beth talks to Camille about, hey, you know, my family also didn't accept Terry. That kind of gives Camille some perspective mm -hmm. with regard to his own relationship with Emily. At one point, it comes out that Terry had cheated on Beth. And that's caused a rift. Also, always a bit of a tension with them. Terry talks about this with Camille while they're sleeping in the same room. Yeah. And it's just like a, a moment of vulnerability that they mm -hmm. share. These little moments of vulnerability get them very close. I, I think I was depressed. That's what it was. Yeah. Let's talk about it tomorrow. Get a full night's sleep. She just it fresh in the morning. smelled so good. It was horrible, too. As soon as I was finished, as soon as I finished, I was like, what did you fucking do? What did you just do? What did you do? I think that Terry and Beth are really good parents. Mm -hmm. They really adore their daughter mm -hmm. and are very protective of her. And they have a close relationship enough that Emily is able to tell them about everything. And Beth is like, we know everything. Yeah. Emily tells us everything. Yeah. You don't have to worry about being committed to anything, Camille. You didn't want to when she was awake. There's no need to do it when she's unconscious. Well, it's more complicated than that. Is it? Because I know about the two devil. I know about the headshots and the secrets. She tells us everything stark contrast to the and relationship that family. Camille yeah which is really sad when you think about it but it also gives you that perspective of the comfort that Emily has over Camille yeah I can't marry someone you find for me and why not because I am in love with someone I am and her name is Emily and she's gonna be a therapist and right now she's very sick but I couldn't tell you that it makes me so sad that I couldn't tell you any of that. Why we liked it. Why we liked it. It's definitely relatable. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be Pakistani to like no. this or white. No. <laughs> Just human. Just human. Yes. You don't even have to be human to like it. You can be a dog. You can be a dog, like a, an alien, an inorganic object. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, all yeah. shapes and forms. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can relate to Camille's, you know, not feeling like he fits in anywhere, really. Which again is usually why you turn to things like comedy. It's like a way of coping, but a way of also sharing your story. Because you feel unique. So you're like, well, I feel kind of alone anyway, so I'm more comfortable 
people actually standing on the stage than being in the audience. And, you know, there's that getting attention and validation and stuff that maybe comes from feeling invisible or feeling on the fringe. And it's also realistic. I like yeah. that. It's not one of those movies where it's about two people that yeah. end up together and that's it. Like, yeah. things don't even have to make sense along the yeah. way. But this one really does. It is yeah. very realistic. There's also just a lot of funny moments that are just very subtle in that it's just like a lot of, like, awkwardness or a lot of, like, little comments or him and Terry are trying to get along. So, uh... Cubs doing good, huh? I don't know anything about baseball. No? Hmm. He doesn't know baseball, and Terry doesn't know what Camille's into or talking about. You know, so there's a lot of, like, missing each other's references and points of view, and a lot of just very relatable stuff that happens when you're interacting with people. Themes. Other people have an impact on your romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. People in your life, your family, your friends, are going to have an impact on your relationship. Doesn't necessarily mean that you won't end up together, but... It could mean that you won't end up together, mm -hmm. or it could mean that there will always be a hurt that isn't resolved. Oh, I think that's your pants. I put them on the railing, they probably fell. It could mean that you do end up together, but maybe there's a hurt that never ends up resolved because mm -hmm. maybe your family decided that they will disown you mm -hmm. for choosing to enter into this relationship, which was what Camille was expecting would mm -hmm. happen and what initially prevented him from pursuing the relationship further and yeah. committing in the way that Emily wanted him to commit. Which is so. why you just gotta be accepting of everybody. But then it's tough because you can't be accepting of everybody because it's understandable that you also want to care about this person that's coming into your life and your family. Do you get along? Are they going to be good to you, the person, your, your kid, you know, or whoever you know? It's that understandable that people care. How much do you care? Do you, do you accept with some caveats or there's some, you know, how much do you step into someone else's life? Mm -hmm. It's tricky to know. But it's also, will they fit in to our culture? Yeah, that's yeah. also really important. Yeah. And that's why it's so much easier for Camille's parents to just be like, marry within your culture. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would be so much easier. They know what we eat. Yeah. They know the songs. They know the yeah. language. And it'll yeah. just be so easy instead of yeah. adjusting and shifting. Life's hard enough. Why do we have to make it harder? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Compatibility versus comfort. You know, there's that rush to get into a relationship or you could risk, you know, waiting for a more compatible connection with someone, but it might never come or it comes a lot later. I'm just really tired. Do you ever want to just be in a relationship so you can just finally relax? Do you ever just get so tired and just want to settle basically just so you can finally relax in a relationship and you don't have to keep going through all the nonsense of dating and being single and people questioning what, what you're doing with your life? I think that's that's a big part of that movie. It's like they just want him to just meet some. Why are you so picky? And for him, he's like, I can't just be with someone. For some people like Camille, they just need it to make sense. Yeah. They need it to be more meaningful mm -hmm. than the practicality of things or the comfort of knowing that your family isn't going to be upset with you. For Camille, that just doesn't make any sense to him yeah. when it comes to finding a partner. Is it that some people care more about compatibility than other people? Or is it that they're just different? So the compatibility requirements are different. Because Camille just didn't, he was the black sheep of the family. He didn't fit in with the rest of the family. So, you know, his brother wasn't necessarily settling or just going along with it and not really wanting someone who's compatible. Him and his wife probably were just more compatible because yeah. he was more closely connected to their culture and everything. Camille, you know, had all these other um, experiences and things that shaped him. And so Emily was just more compatible, like culturally or personality wise or whatever. So yeah. it's not even that he's being more difficult or needing something more specific or unique. It's just, no, he needs to look for the same thing that his brother has. Yeah, but he just true. won't that's find that in the people that he's getting, uh, you know, set up with. The challenges of internet in Google. Yeah. The challenges of interracial relationships. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> it adds a whole other dimension. We're path of least resistance creatures, and again, life is hard. So <laughs> why would we want to make life harder? If you're bringing two families together, there is so much. But because people getting along with people is tough at the best of times. If you're bringing like dozens hundreds of other people potentially meeting dozens or hundreds of other people. There's so much chance of things going wrong or feuds or beef happening. And that can happen within cultures. So then if you throw in a whole bunch of other unknowns, a lot of variables, uh, people not knowing how to navigate at all the other family, mm -hmm. it's really tough. And then you have to just deal with the general societal acceptance or not or lack thereof of the 
relationship. Getting into an interracial relationship, you really have to be more sensitive to your, your partner's, your partner's background, background yeah. and reality in life. Yeah. And I think you really need to step outside of your norm. It requires um, a bit more empathy, I guess. Well, not that more empathy, not that like other relationships don't require a lot of empathy for the partner, but yeah. like... You gain a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Things like, why won't you introduce me to your family? Yeah. That's a different thing. Like, that's a comfort that Emily has that Camille doesn't have. It's really hard to maintain adult relationships in the modern society because of the amount of competition and envy that the world brings to relationships, I find. It makes me think of like him and his friends doing comedy. Like they're all competing. Unfortunately, they're all pitted against each other. Only a few people can get selected for a comedy festival or potential comedy gigs or shows or whatever. And so they're all trying and they're all hanging out. And there is also this kind of competitive air where like, it's because they're comedians, so they take jabs at each other, but it can get kind of vicious at times. And like anything, right? It's that kind of situation everywhere. So you have all these people trying their best and then some just, it doesn't work out or they're not noticed. And then he ends up moving to New York with his more successful friends and leaving his roommate who also was trying comedy. I don't know. I think it's, that's a big part of like a lot of the loneliness and a lot of the splits in, in communities that's happening with everybody. The competition in every possible arena and field and the envy and the resentment that brings, I think it's just, it's so destructive. I saw a sniffer dog at the airport get a boner. Does that mean drugs or bombs? That's good. What if, what if instead of it being at the airport, you quit comedy and never did comedy ever again? Yeah. Bo Burnham's character, I think he was just playing a more dickish version of himself. I don't think he's actually that dickish in person. Although you get some people being like, no, actually I met him one time. He was a real dick. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, well, it's probably two things. Either you were treating him just like a commodity or an object, not like an actual person. And people don't actually respond well to that. So he was actually probably responding still nicer than you were. Or that second one might be over time, he's developed good boundaries. And someone that has a really good solid boundary game for people that don't, they seem like a dickish person, the person with good boundaries. Yeah. For the person that just wants and takes and wants attention, wants pictures, wants autographs. The person that's just very respectful, but it's like, no, that can seem dickish to people that have a very poor boundaries game. Bit of a tangent. Burning questions? I know you're tired, so you might not have any burning questions because you're just like, wrap it up. <laughs> Stop it. Let's go. Was Camille dodgepodge in mm. not telling Emily in advance yes. about his family situation. And and what level of dodgepodge acidity? Dodge yeah. podacity. Dodge podas dodge podis dodge podaciousness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dodge podacity. I think there's definitely some podginess, mm -hmm. but it's just tough. But it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough, exactly. That's a... that's why it's a burning question. Yeah. Was he yeah. dodgepodge? Yeah. And on a scale of one to ten, how yeah. dodgepodge? One yeah. being not at all, and mm -hmm. then ten being super dodgepodge. Yes. Um other than that, honestly. Honestly? I can't really think of anything. Do you I... think Camille and Emily end up together? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's some stuff that we had to say about the big sick. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Share your thoughts on our thoughts. Till the next time. Peace. Apparently, there are good and bad comas, and the kind that they put around the medically induced coma are definitely like the good kind of coma. Like, you know how there are good and bad carbs? Or gremlins? Those can be good or bad. Listen, come on. Uh, we're gonna handle things from here, okay?